Welcome to Exit Point, a podcast about the advancement of base jumping and the exploration of its culture. I'm Matt Blank, producer and co-host. If you'd like to support this independent production, visit our Buy Me a Coffee link in the description and leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. In this episode, we're celebrating a milestone in our podcast. Sometime last year, thanks to all of you out there, we passed 100,000 downloads and have since blown past that. So thank you all for listening and supporting us by sharing the podcast, leaving us reviews, and donating so that we can continue producing the show. This episode, we're doing a roundtable discussion with the Exit Point team to talk about how we've been doing and where we hope to go. As an added bonus, we've got the man behind the sound, Mark Stockwell, joining us to share his perspective. So without further ado, let's start the track. So we wanted to do a little background about uh, why we started this podcast and uh, a few other things. Matt, why did why did we start this podcast? Well, I started this podcast uh, because I see our community facing kind of a crisis of ego um, on both ends of the spectrum. You know, I, I think that there are a large subset of people who uh, don't know very much but are very loud. And I think there are a large subset of people who know a whole lot who are incredibly quiet. And then there is the majority of jumpers like caught in the middle of that, you know, war zone trying to figure out, you know, who's telling them valuable information. And the podcast, I think, gives a lot of voice to some of the folks that are drowned out by the, you know, larger community. Yeah. And so you guys had Mark and Matt, you guys had been talking about doing some sort of project like this before I approached you, Matt, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I came at you with the idea of starting this and you're like, boom, let's do it. There was like zero hesitation. And, and then you said, oh yeah. And then I got my friend Mark, who's, uh, who would be a great addition to it as well. Mark, you, um, I think, Nobody knows who you are um, outside, your, you know, your personal life. Um, will you share a little bit about your background uh, in the sound space and then uh, skydiving and base jumping? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've a, been a production sound mixer for about 15 years in TV and film. And uh, yeah, Blank and I had talked for a while about this uh, topic, you know, just kind of a, like a recurring theme of, you know, getting more information out there and sort of the lack of information that existed we both started skydiving around the same time like 2007 and my perspective back then was you know base jumping was such a dark art and you couldn't get information about it It was really really hard to access any you know uh, any consistent and reliable information and so it was always something that i was like trying to find more information on i got better over the years you know and um when i started base jumping still though it was I don't know. It was just was like, I had a lot of frustration that there was no like concise place to, to reference or to get, you know, a lot of these voices and a lot of these, you know, experiences from the wealth of knowledge that it was out there. It was just really hard to access. So, we'd, you know, we'd have this conversation like how, you know, what would be the best way to, to, you know, see change in that and maybe affect a change. And uh, yeah, then you guys, I think came together, right? I got a call from, the two of you was in it because I think Lo, you came up with the idea right for the the podcast, and immediately everybody was just so on board. It was uh, we were all shared the same passion for just getting the information out there. The same thing Matt just said, you know, there's this uh, massive wealth of information that just wasn't really going anywhere. It was you know you could look up an old article someone wrote ten years ago or something, or, or find someone's number, call them directly, but just to find a, a concise place where people had access to all this information, you know, was such an exciting idea. Yeah. And, and that's, that's another point is that like, as the community grows, there are fewer and fewer of those, uh, fireside chats that get that information out to the people that are jumping. You know, it used to be the community was so small that, you know, they could just meet in a parking lot and everybody could share information. And now it's you know, thousands of people worldwide and it's, it's hard to disseminate information, you know, amongst that crew. Also, you know, I think we're, really susceptible to a form of brain drain where uh, the older jumpers retire holding on to a wealth of information that never gets put down anywhere. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we are without that person and trying to figure out what they had already gone through uh, and thus like kind of making the same mistakes over and over again. 
so low. Uh, why, why are you, uh, why did you start the podcast? Like, why did you call us up that day and like propose the idea? Well, I think there's really three reasons. Uh, one was that, uh, at my current job, they wanted to have a podcast and I didn't know how to do podcasts at the time. And so I thought that what a better way to start learning how to, or how to learn how to podcast by podcasting. Uh, so there was the professional element to it. And then um, this was all around COVID. So we had been doing camps before that and wingsuit camps and base jumping camps. And really one of the most satisfying elements of those camps for me was always the base talk. Uh, satisfying in the fact that I really felt like people left with more knowledge and wisdom about ways to steer their own base jumping and um, they were entertaining and I felt like I was connecting with people and I felt like I was really that was really where I excelled at reaching um, our our people and when COVID happened all those camps were canceled the future of camps were uncertain and I wanted to keep the ball rolling with that. It was also a big transition period in my life. I was, uh, you know, a new dad and um, I had started a new full time job. And uh, my future of coaching was, um, you know, called into question. So I didn't really see myself continuing on that path of traveling all over the place to do wingsuit camps. And so I wanted, but I wanted to continue to give back because I felt like I had received so much and I, I just wanted to leave something that's given me so much better than I found it. And I thought this was probably the most effective way that I could do that. Yeah, I, I can uh, definitely uh, parrot that sentiment that those like base talks were very satisfying. And I think that's another reason why I really enjoy doing this podcast is that I think public perception of base jumping has started to drive its culture in that like, you know, the public perception of base jumping is that we're a, a bunch of crazy assholes who like don't really know what's going on and, you know, have this like wish for death and all of this other stuff. But then when you finally sit down with a crew of people who are just getting into it and they can hear from someone like you, um, they kind of understand that there is a, a different culture inside of base jumping. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. You know, and that's really what the third point that, uh, drove me to do this was because, you know, I work in journalism and what I was experiencing, it didn't tell the story correctly. And I really looking in the wider media space, there's no movies, there's no uh, books, there's nothing out there that really helps us to identify what this is really all about. And I didn't think that there was a possibly a better option than these long form discussions that we've been having as far as like really articulating and illustrating in audio form what what base jumping is all about. Yeah, and that's an interesting point, what base jumping is all about, which if you do look at the media that's out there and the movies that are out there and the books that are out there, and Mark and I were just talking about this, all of them or most of them end with the protagonist dying at the end. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's so like the public perception and the most of the media that's driving that like is is leading to the conclusion that like base jumping is completely unsustainable and 100% of the time if you stay in it you're going to end up dead. Yeah, it makes it that much easier to kind of dismiss the entire thing too, right? And like not take it seriously. You already have like a limited window. Like the general public has such a limited window of what they see of base and then all they do see is like oh this like nonsensically self-touting heroic act where you just die in the end. Why would we care about, you know, increasing access and uh, funding towards that? <laughs> it's not. Right. Yeah. And there's know. just so many good stories. You know, we've talked about education and community outreach and, and doing what's best for the sport and whatnot. But like, let's be honest, like some of our friends have some of the most incredible stories of, you know, survival and uh, what have you uh, just experiencing these crazy adventures. And uh, it's just really a shame. Well, I thought it would be a shame to not capture those in the best way that I know how. Totally. I think one of my favorites 
on that note is Sarah Taz's episode. While like we did that at the beginning, you know, I think it's like episode two or three, you know, and it's, you know, we were just starting out. So like technically it's not the greatest episode, but her story is incredible. And mm. it's about, you know, her wingsuiting through the mountains and, and going in and surviving. Um, and I think one of the things that, that really draws me to that episode is that along the way, she's incredibly honest about the, um, you know, decisions that she makes to continue on that trajectory toward going in and, you know, surviving it allows you know us to hear all those decision points. And I think like give some clarity to people who are on that trajectory, either like in total or on a specific jump uh, to kind of kick one of those dominoes out and go like, whoa, 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 this, this road leads there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally, man. Yeah, we, we talk about this a lot too. I mean, the importance of, you know, the birds page and, and even just these detailed incident reports. I mean, it exposes so much and that jump of hers was what, like 10 or 15 seconds in total. And there's so much knowledge gained from, from that moving forward, just because she was honest and came forward with it and, you know, was open to discussing it here. It was just such an incredibly valuable thing to hear, you know? Yeah. That candid na nature of Taz and like how forthcoming she was about her feelings and everything that happened, uh, is really what made it. Uh, yeah. And, I, um, yeah, I just hope that other future guests will be inspired to follow suit because yeah, when the guest is honest and forthcoming with their story and, and really sharing, uh, the nitty gritty, it's so much better. And that's, a, that's a tough thing to do too, in this current culture, I think like, you know, there, it's hard to voice an unpopular opinion. You know, it's hard to put down on a track something that is a declarative statement you know even if though it's framed in the now moment you know people are are wary of of making you know strong statements uh and you know voicing unpopular opinions but you know as as you can see you know the result of doing that is that fewer people will like make those critical errors uh you know if we're you know honest about the mistakes that we've made um i'm kind of curious uh, to ask you guys on the note of like Sarah Taz and her episode, are there any other episodes that, you know, stick out in your mind to revisit? When you say revisit, you mean like, um, and <clears throat> discuss or re bring the guest on revisit in, in the sense of like, go back to, I mean, we've done 44 episodes now. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, some of the ones from back when we started again, least technical, but like some of the greatest stories, you know, I'll bring up mine, for instance, it's, it's Chris Burns. Mm. You know, yeah. I think that one is worth everybody revisiting uh, because unfortunately, you know, he went in after we've, you know, recorded the episode. And so it, it's, it's just really interesting to hear how he sounds. Yeah. That's a, that's a difficult question for me because I feel like, um, well, stepping back, like, um, just this whole podcast project. Um, one thing for me is that I've feel like I've learned more about communicating than any other exercise I've done in my entire life. The, the fact of like having this microphone in front of my face, the headphones in my ears, and just having this either two on one or one on one conversation that's focused for a, an hour and a half. We do not do that in our normal lives. We have so much distraction, uh, you know, where we have our activities, uh, we have phones, we have all, you know, whatever the distractions of life. It is incredibly rare to sit down and have this kind of focus with somebody. And uh, I just feel really fortunate to be able to connect with all of these really awesome people that we have so far. So I can't really say like there's one that sticks out. Uh, more than the other. They all seem to have like a, a level of value. And, and for me, this interviewing uh, is a skill that I want to continue to hone and hone um, and, you know, making people feel comfortable with the, the technology, uh, being able to be forthcoming uh, is something that I want to continue to get better with. And each one of the guests has sort of helped me along that way to, to develop the skill. And, um, I'm just looking forward to, to doing more of these and, and getting better and better at it. And I'm sure 
I, I hope that everybody who's been a guest so far will be a future guest for a number two, because there's just, there's just so much stuff we haven't covered so many times that I've like stopped the record button and gone like, Oh my God, we didn't cover this. We didn't remember when this happened. You know, there's just so many instances that, that I want to touch on with all of these guests and or times that we've like had an entire interview hit the cutting room floor because we just didn't technically do a great job of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's happened. Yeah. We've had a few of those. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd love to revisit some of those. Like the first one we ever tried to do with uh, Rich Webb. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, Rich. Yes. If you're listening to this, man, we love you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, we need to get you back on uh, more in the style that we've uh, we've picked up along the way of just about talking about your life and everything you've picked up along the way. That would be fantastic. Yeah, we were learning a lot still at that time. That was the first episode we ever tried, and we had some some uh, growing pains early on. But this was really the transition there. where we had this idea of like it would just be an educational uh, training piece, right? This would be audio for mm -hmm. learning, and then it was like, wait a second, we have all these stories that everyone has to tell, and this can really be part entertainment, part learning. And uh, I think we're constantly playing with that balance of like, is this entertainment? Is this learning? And um, yeah, we're going to continue to uh, find that balance uh, in the future. Well, that's a question that people keep bringing up to us that um, might be worth posing right now, which is uh, how are we choosing guests? Yeah. Well, I can say starting from episode one, um, Matthias, um, I picked Matthias for the first episode um well i guess that would really after rich because i knew he was really articulate and had a lot of public speaking experience and i knew that we could sort of piggyback on his articulateness <laughs> and <laughs> um um you know he really did a great job of of talking about uh his experience and and being an advocate of uh, of um well, you know, self promoter. And that, that re that's really a difficult thing, I think, for a lot of our guests, because um, it's, it takes, it, 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 that's not easy, right, is to talk about the things that you've done um, with a level of humility. It's, it, it's hard. And um, I think he does that really well. And so I knew he would be a great guest. And, um, and I've known him for a long time. Uh, he was there for my first jump and, um, and it was another great excuse to have a, a fantastic conversation with him. Yeah. I think, uh, checking humble at the door is something that's difficult, but necessary for these conversations and for base jumping in, in general. You know, I think oftentimes we find that the people that know a whole lot are more apt to say that they don't know anything at all. And so, you know, we don't get the, the value of, you know, their insights uh, versus I, I think like sustainable base jumping requires us to say, hey, I know at least this much. And if not, like, you know, how are we even executing these things? You know, I, I hope that like more people out there that um, have some idea of, you know, base jumping are willing to come on and kind of drop humble at the door and just take a chance and say like, Hey, this is what I think I know. Um, you know, it might change tomorrow, but like throw it down. Yeah. There's a lot of silent badasses out there that we want to hear from. We want to have on here desperately. Yeah. 100%. So uh, back to like how we're choosing those people. Um, Mark, you got any, uh, opinion on like how we're continuing? Like, I know this has changed like, from episode to episode but you know what are you looking for in a guest you know um i mean my favorite thing about the show is how much we get to help share but also how much we learn i learned so much from every single episode so you know we've got this incredible wealth of uh of people and stories and experiences and knowledge out there to, to pick from and we're at this point where we still have just so many people we want to have on and it's uh oftentimes a more logistical trouble than anything else just because people all over the world we're trying to get mics to them we're trying to line up time zones all over the planet and everything but we have so many great people to hear from and i am just i you know my favorite episodes i think are the people or the ones that um expose blind spots you know in my knowledge where like uh like i think doc, dr matt wilkes episode for instance like he was you know talking about um like you know medical health in the field and 
things to be more prepared for like uh trauma care and, and just like you know areas that you know a lot of people you know myself and a lot of people maybe i jump with have an idea of how we you know a you know, theoretical knowledge of, of all these things and to hear someone come on like that with a really really in-depth detailed you know uh knowledge base and in this space that can share so much it's like it's so, it's exciting for me because i get to hear and learn about you know an in-depth process that it takes it you know takes these pieces from the unknown into the known in a really great way and so there's been so many episodes like that that you know looking for this uh you know looking for these blind spots in the knowledge and trying to find more dark corners to expose that's that's what kind of gets me the most excited but i mean i love it all i love hearing stories from friends and uh hearing you know badass achievements but also people that you know don't you know, don't have a lot of publicity people that aren't often in the, in the front of the spotlight you know there's just it's really cool to see what these people have to offer well let's address that for a second because i think there's also a public perception and i get this from like the messages that i receive on social media and by email but i think there's a public perception that we have a certain type of person that we're trying to invite on the podcast you know and there are a lot of people that might have something to say that are very shy about it because they're like oh well like i'm not I'm not like some professional base jumper, you know, I, I don't belong here, you know, versus like, I don't think that we're approaching it from that angle. Right. Yeah. We're just looking for value and, and, you know, and context, there's a lot of it out there. And yeah, we, it has been a, a, tr a struggle to get people to, there's so many people that are so humble and so not used to being put, uh, you know, in the spotlight and diving into these things in a public way. And so it's, it, they're uncomfortable with it or, just it just feels it feels you know unnatural but that usually is where the most amazing information comes from you know yeah on that i think that um it's important to hear from the touted experts you know like the people who've been around for a long time but i think it's also important to hear people from every aspect of the progression and path of of the the practice because you know, like uh, when I was a firefighter, our uh, captain, I was on this hand crew and uh, we you know we did some dangerous shit. And he was he was always like, I don't care if you're the new guy or you've been on this team for five years. I want everyone to speak their mind if they see something that they're questioning. And I think that, you know, like what Mark said, that everybody uncovering those those dark spots can come from every aspect of, of uh, or every uh, experience level. And I think it's important for us to not only hear the stories of people at different stages, but also to come at these activities with a fresh pair of eyes. Because, you know, I'm, and personally, I'm excited to interview more people that are like base adjacent that maybe have done a few base jumps and uh, are more active in other um, mountain adventure sports. You know, like we have, uh, people in our community who are professional mountain guides, who are paragliding pilots, competitive paragliding pilots, uh, skiers. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And there's so much to learn from these people. Even if they haven't decided to dedicate themselves to base jumping, they still have a lot to contribute. Totally. Yeah. In their, in their mentality to approaching dangerous situations. Because a lot of those sports that you mentioned and a lot of those activities have had a longer track record of people surviving and succeeding and doing radical stuff uh, versus like base jumping is still relatively new, you know, 19, late 1980s, early, you know, mid 1980s to now versus like mountaineering, which has been around for hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. And also, and these people are specialists in things that base jumpers like dabble in. I mean, there's been so many times, you know, I've been in an area or something around a base jump and like there's someone who's rappelling for the first time ever to a base jump. You know, they have zero mountaineering experience, but they put themselves in a mountaineering situation because of the base jump requires it. But they don't, you know, get to hear from somebody who's that's their thing. That's what they do. And if you're going to start creeping into this world of, you know, being in the alpine environment or being in an environment that they're not used to at all, but someone else has an absolute specialty in the skill set. It's really important to get that information out there. You know, let's address this small elephant in the room too. Some of the other messages that I get are about, you know, like, why don't you have this person on? And, you know, is this person right? And I think sometimes uh, people think that you have to be popular in order to be on the podcast 
or like we might shy away from somebody because uh, they have a bad reputation for X, Y, or Z, you know, and I'd like to address that and, you know, kind of get you guys opinion on it. Like, do we give a shit like who somebody is outside of base jumping or are we just looking for value for, you know, their base jumping or adjacent expertise? Well, I know, I know personally, um, maybe I'm going back to the same theme, but, um, when I don't agree with somebody, it's a harder interview. Uh, it's harder to extract workable knowledge. It's hard to have a conversation. It's hard to, to balance the pushback with the, the storytelling. And, um, I may have shied away with, from some interviews with people that I don't relate to in the way that they practice. Um, so in that regard, I would say that it's not because I don't see that there's value in it. It's that, uh, maybe I just either was lazy about it or didn't feel ready. But then also I don't want anybody to uh, think that they're on that list because they haven't been a guest yet. I mean, our lists of wants and, and, um, even the people that have confirmed are, is really long. So I think that uh, there's only been a couple names that have come up where I went, oh, well, this is going to take some some moment to chew on. I don't know my my personal workflow. I don't know about you, Matt, but is um, I get the idea of a guest and I chew on it about like what I want to talk to them about for a long time. Like uh, I think about how I'm going to approach it. I think about like what the direction that I want it to go. Um, potential ways that they can respond. And it, it occupies uh, a lot of mental space. And so, um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's that's really been my process of, of choosing guests. Totally, totally. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of mental uh, capacity just to hold on to a certain conversation with somebody. You know, when they say like, hey, I want to do this, like I start thinking about it for weeks and maybe a month and it's like constantly on my mind and then I've got to hold that space, you know, until we have that conversation. Um, I think I'd, I'd also like to dispel the rumor that, you know, we're like intentionally choosing these people. Like a lot of the times, like all three of us have our just heads below water and we're trying to churn and, you know, the person pops up and we're like, yes, we have the time and we have the space and, you know, there's something to say and let's put them on, you know? So like, if you're out there and you haven't been approached by us at all, it's not because like, we don't find value in approaching you. There might be some people that are like epic that would have like the greatest conversations. And it's just that like, <laughs> we, we literally just don't have the space, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like we were saying earlier, the, the wealth of knowledge is so big. It's like, you know, we have 44 episodes now, which is exciting. And, I'm, and I know we're all proud of that number, but it's like, man, that's 44 of like a couple hundred at least that you can come up with off the top of our head of people we really want to have on here immediately, you know? So it's just the logistics, the time and the availability and getting, getting to everybody we want to hear from. It's just going to take some time, yeah. you know? Um, but no, you certainly don't have to be popular to, to be on, you know, I don't think that's ever been a requirement. Um, and even, yeah, like it, as long as there's objective value in the thing, that's all that really matters. You know, I mean, everybody's got a unique perspective that comes on here and I've never heard an episode that I didn't learn something from, at least personally that I didn't, you know, expand knowledge into some direction or give a new perspective, at least on something else that, you know, I hadn't thought about as much as they had, or, or, you know, hadn't, hadn't, didn't have anywhere near that kind of experience. It's all. And so no matter who it is or how it goes or their personality type or how, you know, if they've never used a microphone on a computer before, or if they're a person who's trained in interviews and is a professional athlete, you know, there's always been some, some amount of value that comes out of every episode. And that's the most important thing to me, no matter who's on it. Yeah. I, I think that's an important part to pair it here, uh, which is like the popularity thing has, has nothing to do with, you know, how we're selecting these, you know, at the root of this, you know, we're trying to disseminate information that'll save people's lives, you know, and whether we might disagree with somebody or not, you know, get along with them in public or hell, like to take this to an extreme degree, they might be the worst murdering, you know, son of a bitch on the planet, you know, but if they've got some expertise or perspective or story that somehow helps our community, I think they're worth hearing from. 
Yeah, especially at this point in the process when that's like we're, we're at the beginning of this this journey to, you know, bring this information to the masses and this is the way we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, bring, bringing the information to the masses was a real shock for me. Like, uh, honestly, when we started this, I thought that, you know, maybe we would have uh, a couple nerds and our parents listening to this and that would be about it. And, uh, you know, now we average at uh, something like uh, three to 4,000 downloads per episode. That's um, that's way more people than I expected and way more people that don't jump, which is wild. Um, I did not anticipate that at all. Um, those are some of my favorite um, emails and comments that we get is uh, people that either are base curious or just admire it or just curious about it or it's just. It really brings me joy to know that we're uh, helping to kind of fill that void and, uh, it, you know, share what this is all about again. Yeah, that's, that's like one of the biggest goals for, for me as well in this. I think is I know we've all talked about this is uh, changing public perception over time. You know, it's one thing that's incredible is getting this information directly to people right away. But it also starts to drive the ship in that direction where there's not just, you know, two pieces of media where someone dies and that's the only thing people know about base jumping. There's starting to be a conversation that is slowly branching out beyond jumpers, you know, where people are seeing the work that goes into it, the stories that go into it and and kind of getting the broader picture as we go. And hopefully that keeps going in that same direction. And hopefully that means that, you know, in the future, it can dramatically change the public perception of base jumping and make it better. So uh, along that line, and, you know, aside from the numbers, how do you guys think we're doing? Yeah, again, um, like honing the craft of interviewing, I think is a a never ending process. Uh, I feel like we're getting better. I think um, the scheduling issue was really challenging. Um, Being on point with um, all of our equipment and everything has been a challenge. And I think all of that is just really starting to fall into place. I I honestly feel like we're just starting to hit our stride. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, what 2024 is going to bring. Mark, you're behind the curtain on all this. How how are we doing? (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. The growth has been amazing. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a long career in, in TV and stuff, but, uh, podcast was a totally new thing for all of us when we started doing this and, uh, we didn't know how the, how it was going to look. We know we wanted to make it a really formatable, recognizable show, you know, and we wanted to have a simple format and we just didn't know where to start. And there was a lot of question marks and a lot of technical issues, a lot of logistical issues. I mean, in the beginning we were only doing two on one episodes and, scheduling Laurent in France, Matt in Utah, a guest in Norway, getting a mic out there. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, the hurdles we were trying to solve. I mean, we'd spend a month on trying to get an episode to work. And then the one day it's supposed to work, some little issue would happen and the whole thing would fall apart. And it was like, you know, so the hardest thing I think was creating something that made sense, was doable and was consistent. You know, consistency was so, so, so hard early on, especially just because we had these cards stacked in a certain way. And so, yeah, over time, everything's gotten better. Sometimes I go back and I listen to the early episodes and I'm just blown away about how much better it's come, you know, and it's, it's only getting better, you know, uh, the interviews are getting better. The tech is getting better. They, everything's sounding better. It's just, uh, and, and we're hitting our stride again with logistics, trying to make it more repeatable, trying to make it more consistent. There's still struggles. It's still hard. There's still people all over the world. We're still trying to get mics all over the world. We're still trying to line up crazy schedules and things happen at the last minute, things change. And, it is difficult. You know, we all live busy lives. We're all working and, you know, there's times when things just get insane for a few weeks and it's really hard to, to keep it consistent. But, um, I'm really proud of the growth that we've shown and now starting to even branch into some newer things, some, you know, maybe future partnerships, maybe other projects, maybe making bigger episodes where, you know, I think we're kind of consistently inching forward in a way that, that works and is sustainable. And I'm super excited for the next year for sure. Yeah, I also think, you know, we are equal parts doing this thing great considering where we started, but also not nearly doing good enough, you know, considering what our goals are. You know, what uh what do you guys think we can do uh to make the podcast better moving forward? I know personally that I would like to do a better job of hitting that record button um after getting people more comfortable um not everybody works in front of a computer or, you know, does regular video conference calls. 
And I think some of our guests have needed a little bit more support before the recording starts. And I think that being able to empathize where they are at and how they're, what they're able to share before I start land, you know, launching some questions in their direction is really like the key of, for me, as far as extracting valuable knowledge and insight. That's hard not to do though. You know, like, I feel like one of the things we could do better is just get to the point quicker, which might mean that like, <laughs> we do like a little more of that prep work, uh, and, you know, cut out some, you know, back and forth before the recording starts. But like, I feel like diving into some of these topics, like right off the top, uh, might, might make a better overall, um, podcast since, uh, you know, if we start right at the meet, we might get to some of the fringe things that, like you said, we never get to, and you're like, you hit the record button. You're like, oh man, like we missed that, you know, like, yeah, we, well, I think we leave a, a lot on the table. There's a lot to cover in an hour and a half. And, uh, there's, it's a dense, you know, it's a delicate balancing act, I think. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with humans. We are humans. And there's a very strong human element to talking about these really sensitive stories. Sometimes, you know, we're talking about on one side of the spectrum, people's most beautiful moments of their lives to some of the darkest, most tragic points in their lives. So, uh, for us to just jump right in and expect to get, um, you know, right to the heart of it, um, isn't always appropriate. But again, humans, sometimes that the guest is, is ready for that. Sometimes the guest has been prompted and, and, and is ready to dive in and, and other times they're not. Yep. Yeah. I feel you. There. And well, when, while we're talking about goals too, is like, I think the way that I would like to continue working and structuring the, these is, is having a little bit more concrete idea of like what we're going to cover first and, and what can bring, you know, those emotions to the surface. And I think telling stories is the way to go for, for me and, and the way that I want to approach it and getting our guests to share some of their favorite stories right off the bat and, and following up with, uh, you know, the meat of it, as you put it. I totally agree with you. I, you know, I found that, uh, the most valuable, uh, learning tools, educational tools, um, coincide with stories are like alongside stories. You know, it, there's like two ways that I've seen myself learn in this sport. And one is through direct experience, you know, Oh shit, I messed that up. <laughs> Don't do that again. Um, and two is to see somebody mess up and go like, man, I was about to do the exact same thing. Let me like change direct, you know, direction. Um, and then story is like the, you know, kind of sideline of that, where if somebody has a really good story, you know, I'm able to put myself in those shoes or alongside that person and kind of see myself making those critical errors or succeeding where they, uh, have succeeded and thus like, you know, progress in a way that I, I wouldn't have without having to learn a hard lesson. Yeah, Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we should be telling more stories and, you know, uh, less just rote information. Yeah, I think it comes with like also not going in with, this, you know, specific expectations on the kind of knowledge that you're going to gain from the interview, you know, because when you bust out the flashlight, if you're looking for something specific, you're, you will find it, but you're going to miss all the other stuff that's around it, you know, and, and I think getting giving people the opportunity to explore those stories and tell, you know, tell a broader picture of it It may take more time, but I don't care about how long it takes. You know, I want to hear the information and and that's typically where I'm most surprised and most excited and most engaged is when like all these, you know, this new perspective that I would have never even thought of starts emerging just by shining a light on this person's story, you know, that, that hasn't had a light shined on it on a big platform before, you know? Yeah. And I think, uh, exposure is, is definitely a goal of mine and to expose culture that's been drowned out by the radness of base jumping. You know, quite often what you see is just the end result of somebody's work, but you never see the work. You just see them like flying off a cliff and skis or like ripping down a terrain line in a wingsuit, you know, or doing some crazy stunt, whatever. Um, but 
very seldom, if, if not ever, do you see the work that went into that, the training that went into that, the calculation that went into that. And so our, our culture is like still kind of grip it and rip it um, versus I think the underlying culture is where base jumping began, which is a group of basically scientists who were also, you know, extreme sports enthusiasts. No, I love that point too. I think that that's such a, a something I'm so passionate about too, with, uh, this type of project is you know, that's, that was kind of the conversations that revolved when you and I first started talking about this, Matt too, was, uh, yeah, no one's seeing the work. It's like such a small percentage of base jumping is base jumping. You know, like it's such a small detail in the big picture is the actual part where you jump off the cliff and land on the ground safely. Um, and nobody got to see that stuff. And, you know, all the media you would see was either just a highlight reel of, you know, exit, cool flyby, exit, look at this, you know, rap, you know, rad lines, but you'd see none of the work. And I kind of like that our podcast is the opposite. Like there's no base jumping on our podcast. <laughs> you know, it's just all of the work and behind the scenes and like the real story that's going on that there's no previous exposure to, or, you know, not, not a large amount of pre previous exposure to, I guess. And I, I want to see that trend keep going because people are just dedicating their lives to, to doing this amazing thing. And, and people just see this one little snippet on their phone for 30 seconds, like, oh, that was cool. And then they go to the next thing and just never get the big picture of what was happening. And I think that's, to me, that's the most exciting stuff. So what else do we hope to achieve with what we're doing? You know, what do we want for our listeners, our community, ourselves? Well, for myself, I, um, like Mark really touched on a bunch is like learning from all of our guests is just continuing to hone this blade of a skill, uh, for my own jumping and making sure that I don't leave any trace uncovered, uh, no rock unturned and being able to see all the, the beauty and the danger and uh, having these conversations definitely does that. I haven't been able to be as active as I have in the past few years. And I feel like having these conversations keeps me at current in a, in a certain way, not necessarily skills wise. Um, you know, like I'm continuing to have to train my skills, but it's keeping my, my mind straight and strong. And I, that was an element that I didn't quite expect, like thinking about jumping, thinking about the process, thinking about everything that goes into it is really like visualization. Like all of our guests that are really high performance athletes and within the base space are all talking about visualization and this has been my own sort of sense of visualization and uh yeah i've uh it's really given me a lot mark yeah totally um personal knowledge is something i'm unbelievably grateful for that i get out of this i mean i learned so much from every single episode i really i really love how much i get to you know learn just from being a part of this process um I mean, the other goals are one i really you know, want to pro help provide um, a resource that I wish I had when I was getting into base. You know, there's a lot of people who are maybe base curious or, you know, just thinking about base and it's not the easiest thing to just go out there and gain a lot of access to. So someone who's just thinking about it and just trying to wrap their head around it can actually now listen to all these people and, and have a, a huge amount of, you know, input and perspective just going into the first decision making all the way through your whole progression you know you have something for everybody wherever at what stage you are in the progression there's something to learn from somebody on here and, and to continue to grow that so that's accessible to everybody is really important and third um is to change the perception over time of base jumping you know like i agree with you matt and and low this uh you know the public perception of base jumping has historically been really weak we you know and especially in america it's mostly illegal it's very frowned upon very misunderstood and no one takes the time to understand it, but there also isn't really a great way for them to, even if, they, even if they wanted to take the time to understand it, because, you know, like for surfing, you know, when, when the uh, endless summary came out, people, there was a moment where it clicked. It was like, oh, these aren't just a bunch of like dirty bums out doing rowdy stuff. There's this beautiful story being told and you got to see the work and the adventure and the, the why, you know, and the how and, and see this incredible journey. And people got to see you know, surfing from a surfer's perspective. And this hopefully allows us to show base jumping from a base jumper's perspective, not just from a social media perspective or something where it's about getting rad. You know, I want, I want the world to see what we see when we, when we do this. Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely echo everything you said that there, Mark. And I think that that's like 
we had this conversation off camera or off mic uh, a few weeks back about like, what do we want for the podcast? Like, do we just want to continue the way that we're going? Uh, do we want to just maintain and have this sustainable or do we want it to grow? And if we want it to grow, why do we want it to grow? And I want to see it grow for that very reason, just so that we can hit those people, change some perception and see our sport change for the better. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. On, on my end, I think for the listeners, what I want uh, is very much the same as what Mark just said is an unobscured window into base jumping, you know, such that they could, you know, gain a greater understanding of it. Uh, if they're interested in pursuing it or if they're not interested in pursuing it, maybe they, you know, get some insights from <laughs> our extreme behavior that allow them to do something great with, you know, the passions that they have without having to follow us over the edge and risk their life. Um, you know, as, as far as community goes, that one's pretty simple for me. You know, I, I'd like everyone to be able to jump intentionally and, I think that is separate from motivation. You know, like I, th I think life coaches have kind of fucked up the English language when it comes to understanding intention. And for me, intention has nothing to do uh, with purpose. You know, it has to do with how much purpose you've put into it. You know, and in order to put purpose into something, you need an incredible in amount of information. You have to be informed to make that choice. You know, otherwise you are essentially doing something unintentionally. If you like, you, if you subscribe to that notion that like, you don't know what you don't know, you know, then like that is by default unintentional because you could not have purposely done that thing. Right. And, and through the podcast, I'm hoping that we put out more information so that people can make, you know, informed decisions. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, at the, at the extreme version of this, at least take some intention into the end of their life. You know, it's so tragic when somebody goes in unintentionally and it's at least some, uh, it serves as, as some solace solace. Yeah. Thank you. When, you know, you get somebody like Chris Burns, who at the very least met his end with intention. And for myself, you know, I think like, I just, I just want to get out of the sport with a clear conscience. You know, like I, I know that I've, I've picked up a lot along the way from everybody that came before me and all of my, uh, you know, friends that I've met along the way. Uh, some of them still here, some of them not, but I've benefited greatly from all the people who have put time and energy into my personal progression. And I think it's like my duty to try and leave all that on the table before I'm too old to, <laughs> for anyone to listen, um, you know, and, and people might not listen, but at least I've done my best to try and, you know, put that out there so that it's available. Uh, so that's, that's for me what, what I'm trying to get out of the podcast. So it's, it's hard to follow up really well said. Mike. Well, okay. Then, uh, next thing on the list and kind of the last element to this, um, particular episode is how can people help? Well, first, wow. I mean, the, the flow of support that we've received is shocking, amazing, and heartwarming. Um, everybody that supported us through, uh, buy me a coffee. Um, it's just, way more than I expected. And everyone that's taken the time to pause an episode and just follow that link and, and donate. Um, I mean, I guess we should tell them like that money goes to our equipment, our subscription fees. And when I say equipment our microphones and every, most of the guests receive a microphone, we ship them a microphone and that's the way that we can get capture the audio at this quality. We've done a couple um, that we wanted to capture fast and we, you know, they had some headphones or we got suckered into thinking that they had something good when it wasn't, but we're learning and uh, we want to continue to deliver that really quality audio sound. So um, 
Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how to thank all these people. It's just amazing. What I mean, back to our goals a little bit, I, I'd love to like really have more engagement with the people that are supporting us. Um, you know, we've talked about um, some of the partnerships that are coming down the pipe and being able to offer some 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 gifts to these people and and uh, really bringing them in closer uh, would would be fantastic because I love that connection. This is a really strange medium because uh, it's just usually like a couple of people, you know, in a dark room with the microphones talking and then Mark works on it, tools it up. We put an intro at the beginning and then we upload it and then it's sort of out in the ether and, and then I'll go to the wingsuit tunnel and a bunch of people will come up to me and be like, Hey man, I love exit point. And you know, it's just, it doesn't have the sort of feedback, the rapid feedback that you get from let's say social media or doing something in the real life, real world, you know, it, there's, there's this different element to it. I don't know if that's been your guys's experience as well, but, um, it's really interesting and uh, extremely satisfying when we hear from people that they that they enjoy the podcast and that they got a lot out of it. And yeah, we just want to continue to um, to develop and and strengthen those those uh, connections. Yeah, same. I'm always just kind of blown away at, at how well received it is. You know, I mean, I, we were in the same boat when we first made this thing. We we're like, oh, well, at least our moms will know why we base jump now. You know, and that's <laughs> exactly. pretty much the goal. <laughs> like, no one else is going to listen to this. Um, so it's yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, honestly, like we haven't really touched on this. So the whole point we wanted to do this episode was for our hundred thousandth download. We wanted to do an episode celebrating that and talking about the podcast. But before we could even do it, we made it to one hundred fifty thousand because you guys just keep listening to it. So um, you know, to see the consistent growth and to see. Um, that people are, are enjoying it and still spreading it and increasing listening and that it's branching out, you know, it's amazing. And then, yeah, I'm just completely blown away at uh, the people that have taken the time and, and energy and money out of their life to donate to help this thing stay afloat and stay alive. It's just been really incredible. I mean, we didn't expect any of it going into this, you know, we were trying to just put one foot in front of the other and just to, just to deliver this thing and to see that it's been so well received and so well supported by the community is it's really inspiring and it really, you know, helps drive the thing forward. And even if you don't, you know, see that it really, really behind the scenes helps a lot. And it, uh, something we want to continue to do and, and be able to continue to give back to the listeners. You know, that's what, that's what Lowe kind of hinted to a second ago with some of the partnerships that there'll be stuff coming up this year. We're trying to find ways to, to help re-engage and, and give back to the community even more and find new, new ways to do that. So, uh, this relationship that that's being formed in the community is really been very special. Yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, if you agree with what we're doing, our mission, our goal, um, and you you feel like helping, the first thing for me is is listening. Just keep listening. You know, keep listening to us. Keep listening to everybody that's talking about base. To be honest, and if there's something that you agree with, share it. You know, we put this podcast out for free, so <laughs> you know, like I don't I don't give a crap if if you take something that you find valuable on here and you share it you know, make a real post, a clip. I doesn't matter, you know, get, get more listening going. E even if it's like, like a statement that somebody makes, like you go and back and listen to like Scotty Bob's episode. And there's something that he quotes in there that you enjoy, you know, <laughs> share that, you know, and if it's something that you don't disagree with, give us feedback, you know, don't stop listening just because you disagree with something that we've done or something that we've said or somebody that we've put on. Like, give us the feedback of, of uh, why you disagree. Allow us to, you know, address the issues. Um, and if it's something technical that you think we could be doing better, give us that feedback. You know, there are so many different ways that you can engage with us on social media, by email, uh, calling us up. We're incredibly available. So Please give us that email. feedback. Emails were the best. Yeah. And uh, guest suggestions have been fantastic. Um, and the way that guest suggestions can be even more fantastic is if you contact them directly. It's so much more powerful when people say, hey, I want to hear from you. Will you go on that podcast? And uh, it also seems that the, the legwork of like trying to figure out how to contact them. Um, you know, sometimes they're in our network and sometimes they're not. Um, but uh, yeah, um, help us out. It's we totally we love the help. Let me, let me uh, expand on that one for a second. I know a lot of people are out there and they are waiting to be approached by 
anybody, us, anybody to, you know, offer what they have, you know, but it helps us a great deal. If somebody comes out and goes like, yo, dude, I've got something that I want to put on the track, you know, and that starts with somebody going like, Hey, I think you'd be valuable on the podcast. Would you do it? And then, you know, having that conversation, um, so that they hit us up and go, look, this is what I want to throw down. Right now we've saved a ton of back and forth and we know that that person is motivated, has something to say, and we can tailor the episode around that versus having to do a lot of back end work of trying to like pull somebody into, uh, the zone. Yeah, absolutely. And also something that I want to touch on too, is that, uh, we don't have to do a deep dive into your life. If I'm, if you're a potential guest, there's been a couple of people who I really want to get on here and have just in a place in their life where they're not ready for some deep introspection or, or analyzation. And, um, you know, that's cool. We don't need to talk about all the stuff we can talk about. We can do a 30 minute episode. We can talk about just wingsuit coaching. We can talk about just slider down jumping. Um, it doesn't need to be always be a deep dive. I love to go deep dive, but, um, if, if that's the thing stopping you from getting on the podcast with us, um, you know, we can adjust. Yeah. And also it's worth mentioning that everybody that comes on the show to record with us gets the option of leaving it on the cutting room floor. You know, if at the end of the episode, you just really don't like what you said or how you said it, that's fine, man. We're, we're here to make people comfortable and, you know, showcase their best and absolutely not, uh, put out anything that you would disagree with or not want in the public space. Yeah. 100%. Totally. Just don't be humble. <laughs> there's so many people that come on like, I got nothing to say. And then they have an amazing episode and we're like, what? You, what, what? <laughs> there's been incredible. a few of those, haven't there? Yeah. Well, I think we've, we've just about covered everything that we need to for a hundred K episode. Um, thanks everybody for listening. Really. Uh, you make this worthwhile. If it wasn't for you, we'd not be doing this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the hundred and episode, hundred thousand, which is now the 160 something thousand episode. So, um, love you all. Yeah. Thanks to the guests. Thanks to the listeners. Thanks for supporting this whole thing and looking forward to growing more this year and in the future. We hope you enjoyed this episode of exit point. Please help us grow by telling a friend about an episode you enjoyed and leaving us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. If you would like to contribute, you can visit our Buy Me A Coffee link in the description. If you want to get in touch, our email address is in the show notes, or you can visit our website, exitpointpodcast.com. <laughs>